talk like you've never heard it before. Hello, everybody. How are you? It is the Ramble. I am Alex Bennett. I am your humble and obedient host. And, uh, gee, um, you know, I could, for some reason, I know why the earphones sound different. Uh, because I've got a second pair of earphones here. Because there she is, ladies and gentlemen. Ta-da! Yeah, there she is. Let me turn up her microphone. Ta-da! I'm yeah. here. Yeah, after how many weeks? This uh, is like your ninth week. Well, I like that. I think I'm just going to be a guest that comes on once in once a while. Once every nine weeks? Yeah, I like okay. that. Okay, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's a holiday. I have four days off. Da-da-da-da. Da-da-da-da. Mm-hmm. Bum-bum. Yeah, okay. Let me see here. I forgot to, I forgot to start the show on time. Because there was all, all of a sudden there was a sudden. Um, there was uh, no no earphones for me. Y- well, I forgot what it's been so long. You since forgot I, what they looked like. I have no idea what happened to the other set of earphones. They're probably around here somewhere. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, because it's been a while. Well, I like it like that. Huh? I like it like do, that. Do you like it like Every that? Every nine weeks, I'm going to come on. Hmm. Every nine weeks, I see. Okay. Well. Gee, so how are you, mister? I don't know, but I, it, my earphones sound strange to me because uh, the reason they sound oh, strange... Oh, Well, don't, okay. please. Oh. I need a... a tur- just take the earphones out. There, I did. Here, I'm going to unplug them, as a matter Why? of fact. Well, because I because it's cutting down on the sound I have here. Just keep those, and we'll use them a little bit later. But I can't... Uh, I can't... Uh, I have to be able to hear. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Anyway, uh, so how have you been since I saw you eight weeks Fine. ago? Fine. I was sick, which you never mentioned. Two weeks. I finally went into one of those walk-in clinics, yeah. and it ended up the cold that I had after 14 days became a respiratory infection. Yeah. And, and they, you know something? I got to tell you, those, those walk-in clinics. They're fantastic. They're your first level your first door that you hit yeah yeah it's the first thing it's yeah. a walk-in clinic and you hope They're all you, over the city you hope you walk out you know you do i went there and i broke my wrist it was a friday what doctor is open on friday at five o'clock i went to the walk-in they took the x-ray they said yeah it's broken they put the cast on yeah and go see your orthopedic surgeon on monday it, which i did it, yeah but uh, your first it, I mean, defense, your sometimes first they're, sometimes they're not going to solve it. I mean, this one time, the first time I went, I went to the one twenty fifth Street, and the guy got so welled up in the fact that my electrocardiogram was all s- screwed up. Okay, the why don't you put it back where you found it? There we go. Okay, um, was so. Um, uh, 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 wound up in the fact that my EKG was all screwed up because my EKG is always screwed up. It doesn't matter. You well, went anyway. in there complaining that you couldn't breathe and you had shortness of breath, so of course no, it's going to check you for your heart. I told him all the different No, you didn't. Things. I was there. Well, it was very hard to describe. No, it's not. No, it wasn't. certainly describe it to me 24-7. Anyway, so <laughs> about a week... I, I could... <laughs> about a week later, we went back to the... Uh, the guy uh, at, at, at another one. At another walk-in. And, and he gave me the present zone, and that seems to be working. I mean, there are a few little things I have wrong, but I think that they, I'm, yeah. I'm, on, I'm on the mend. I just don't need the hourly update. But my doctor didn't even solve this one. You know, I, uh, when I went to Kenish. Kenish, he didn't solve it, you know, because what none of these doctors did was look in my throat. The last one did, and he said, oh, Got a swollen uvula, yeah. You know, in case again, in case you don't know what a uvula is, uh, that it little is little thing in the well, back. Well, no, here. it. You know, when you see a cartoon of a cat and the cat ate the mouse, and now the mouse wants to get out of the cat, so there's this big thing hanging down in the back of the cat's throat <laughs> that he starts using as a punching bag. That's how I describe what the really? uvula is. That's yeah. it. <laughs> That's the big thing that hangs down. 
Anyway, we're both alive and well, and it's the 3rd of July. It's the evening of. So you're feeling better? Much better. Yeah. yeah. I'm still a little clogged up here. Yeah, I don't hear you. You aren't coughing. She, no. was, she was coughing up just a terrible. And sneezing. Huh? I'm still sneezing, but that's allergies. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I, I, you know, I'm glad. So she, there she is. She's well. Ta da! Look at her. Because you're not going to see me for nine more weeks. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. I like that. Yeah, that camera's not working bad. That's an older camera. This is a better camera here. And I have no earphones. And you have no Cause earphones because I don't count. The last minute she said, Where are the earphones? And I thought I had everything set. Okay? And then it turned out I didn't. So screw it. Anyway. So um, um, uh, let's see. What We're doing nothing for the 4th of July. Nothing. I mean. Well, I'm going to the gym. Zilcho. Yeah, we're just hanging. I may go to the gym tomorrow. Good. Yeah. Well, I'm going to the gym. I went to the gym today. I'm taking a quarter nine class. But I won't go to the gym after Thursday because I'm having that PSA test, and that could affect my prostate. When are you having the test? On Monday. So you don't go to the gym for five days? For four days, three days beforehand. Yeah, no, because uh, cycling can cause a misreading. So there's other things you can do. Well, I don't want to do them. Hmm. Okay, so. Wait a minute, is that, is this, is this, what is this? I found them. I found them. There they ah. are. Uh-huh. You see? I found the, I found the earphones. There we go. Now how does it sound? Okay, okay? Yeah, my ears hurt. Your ears hurt. Okay. Well, we have to turn this up a little bit That's because enough. No, because I have to I have to be able to hear it. Anyway. So, um When are you going to open the phones? I'm just asking. I, I you know something? Tonight we may not get any callers. Well, open it up and see uh, if we do. Phil isn't going to be here. Um Scott says he can't be here. So the one night that I come. Uh, yeah. Uh, so there's. Uh, it doesn't look like anybody's going to be calling us tonight. Well, oh, fine. You're sneezing on the air. You only have me for half an hour. Yeah, right. <laughs> so I may actually, if I don't get enough callers, I may call the show off tonight okay. at a certain point. You know? I mean, uh, I've got 17 minutes left, so whatever you want to do. I've got 17 minutes left with you? Get <laughs> yeah. closer to the mic. So whatever you want to discuss. Yeah, yeah. Bring it on. Anyway, yeah, well, I'm, um, so we're not doing anything for the 4th of July because nobody invited us anywhere. And no one's home. With all your friends, how come we don't get invited places? Because they all have their own places. I don't, you know, I was thinking about it. I don't see any of your friends coming out and inviting us. Uh, uh, what friends? What? <laughs> no, really, I'm serious. I thought about it today. And I have no friends here. Well, whose fault is that? No, no, it's not my fault. I, if we were back in San Francisco, I would have lots of friends. Well, you're not. You know? You're here. Be, you no, know, but I'm someplace where I don't have friends, and you're someplace where you do. So where are your friends for the 4th of July? They're all away. They all have plans. Oh, really? They're with their families. The plans that do not include us. Yeah, we'll go to a movie I or something. I see, huh? Maybe you do a movie tomorrow. Do a movie? What yeah. movie? I don't know. We'll see what's out. Uh, yeah? Uh, uh, see what's out. I hope it's nothing that we could wait and see at home. Probably will be. Oh, but really? But we're getting out of this house. Really? Yeah. Oh. I'll go by myself. What, what movie? What movie know. would you I like to see? I have no idea. I haven't been to a movie in ages. Well, here, wait a minute. I'll show you. I'll, I'll, I'll go here. What, where do we go for movies? What's the, uh, what is the uh, go-to thing? AR for fin, fin, Fandango. Fandango. Well, let, let, or ARC. Let's go AMC. AMC. Okay, because we always like to go to the uh, um, AMC theaters. Okay. All right. So now I have to find the one at... Uh, 84th and Broadway. Uh, okay, well, uh, let's go. Okay. Uh, allow. Okay, let's go. All right. So now I want to find uh, um, uh, theater, our theaters. Uh, let's see here. The AMC 86th Street... 84th. 80, 86th. That's 84th. 84th. Yeah. There it is. Okay. Here's your, here, here's your choice. Annabelle comes home. It's a horror film. Yeah. Uh, uh, Toy Story 4. That's supposed to be good. Really? Nah. 
you know, come on. You, you, you have one, then you have two, you go, okay, good sequel. Then you did three, and it was okay three sequel. It wasn't bad. I mean, but, you know, four, I'm sorry, I'm tired of Toy Story. All right, I'm go. tired of, of this. All right, just go. Okay. Go, just go on. Uh, let's see here. Spy, uh, let's see here. Spider Man, Far From Home. Uh, let me see scroll here. Scroll down. Oh, oh, scroll down. And I think that's it. Oh, they only have they only have three movies in that theater. No, they have more than three. No, but they have six theaters, and they're showing these oh, things. Oh, oh, all, I see what you're saying. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's that's what the that's what the problem is here. Uh, yeah. Well, that's, that's well. That's, it. That takes care of that. And that's it. I I don't see any other movies. Yeah. No, that's it. Uh, so. There, there's your choice for movies. And, and you know what the problem is? You want to go see a movie this weekend. And this weekend, what are they releasing to the theaters? All the splat and kill. All, 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 the, all, the, all the pop movies. And the Plus, you know, you got to talk about movies for a second. When you go to see movies today, what are they showing in these theaters? Are they, are they showing quality independent films no, anymore? No, no. Well, they are in some of the no, movie No, no. What they're showing are what we call tentpole releases. They're showing releases of films that are product, but they're not very good any other way, all right? Uh, those movies, the independent movies you like, are all being sold to Netflix. No, and Hulu. We watch a lot of it on Netflix. Yeah, yeah. Saves us money. So, I mean, that's where those films are going. And uh, it's uh, kind of, you know, yeah, kind of interesting. So, you know, it, it, the whole world has changed that way. That's sad. sad. Then we have our great president having his big parade Well, tomorrow. he didn't even invite us. He didn't invite any Democrats. You no, know, he didn't invite Did you hear us. That? Yeah. He didn't invite one Democrat to his little party, yeah. and, and, and they're saying it's not political. It, it, it's it, it big donors, big donors. And they're giving a, a he's giving a talk at the at the uh, Lincoln Memorial. So wait a minute, folks. You got you got to figure this one out. He's doing um, uh, a big blowout for the holiday, Fourth right. of July. Right. He's rented out the Lincoln Memorial. Okay. Uh, he's bringing in tanks. You're welcome. And airplanes. And airplanes are going to fly overhead. And Air Force One's going to fly overhead. Jesus. Now, here, here was his thinking on it. I love his thinking on it. He said, well, you know, well, so far as the tanks are concerned, so far as the airplanes are concerned, we own them. So they're free. <laughs> right. <laughs> he didn't say, the, we don't own the gas. <laughs> okay. Uh, we don't own the gas for the trucks that brought in the tanks. Or the military men that have to do overtime for your fucking parade. Yeah, they're going to miss their families on a, on a holiday, you know. Uh, it's going to cost, it, it, conservatively, so far, it costs $2.5 million. Jesus. I'm sure it's going to work its way up to at least 5 or $6 million. Wow. He is doing a 30-minute fireworks show. And then, if you want a ticket to it, you have to be a Republican donor to go to it. And that, and that, the fireworks, by the way, were, when I lived in Washington, it's free. You go up yeah. on the mall, so, you so, sit there. So, now they're charging. So what does it make this? It makes it a, a it's political. A, it's uh, a political event. Exactly. Yeah, you know, and he should have to pay for it. But you know, why did why was it? What was his thinking? About I need I need a parade because like he has a small penis. Well, he saw it. In, That's why he saw it in France. But the countries that do this kind of Russia, thing, North Korea, yeah, yes, China, <laughs> China. Well, China doesn't. I think doesn't even do it. Do they, they do it? Yeah. I don't think they do. Not no, to the same extent. Not like that. You know. So anyway, uh, it it you know it's all part of his desire. I think to be a dictator. Oh, he wants to. Yeah, he wants to be a strong He's man. He's already mentioned the fact that he might not leave at the end of eight years. He's mentioned that. I'm not going. You're going <laughs> to have to pull me out of here. Um, uh, well, who knows? Uh, we, we don't know if he's going to win this thing. You know? Is he? He looks think? like he's going to. Why? Who do we have, really? I think... 
I think Kamala Harris is is a good shot yeah, possible because, because she's the kind that wouldn't take any shit from him. All right, but see where she is a year from now. Yeah, uh, see mean, where any of these people are a year, year from, from now. now. For all we know, you know, Oprah might decide to run. Biden's going to fall through. Uh, he already has. Yeah, he really has. He already has. He's he's still in first. Did you hear what he said during the during the thing? He ran out of things to talk about when he was talking. He said. I think my time is over. <laughs> Your time is over? He said that. See, I think my time is you over. You know, I, I don't want to... It, Ronnie yesterday, mm. when I talked with her, was having a hard time with this with Biden. She says, because I don't want to get ageist about this, but I think there was a sense of her that she worried like I did, that he's looking... Everybody's seeing you blow your nose. What? I don't care. My nose is running. I thought your cold was over with. It's still running. What are all those high-priced medicines doing for you? Enough. Anyway. Uh, anyway. So, uh, um, uh, he looks doddering. He really did, Dory. I mean, he was like, he couldn't keep up. Yeah, That's but, but, exactly but, but when I, he walked, when he, uh, at these speeches, when he walks up to the podium, he's like, uh, uh. I mean, listen, I'm 79 years old, and I'm not in great shape i'm in okay shape when you say what what are you giving me that i look didn't say for? a thing you didn't say a thing yeah i i go to the gym well, i'm glad you know i mean i think i'm a, a little bit and now that i have medicine i'm i'm healthier and healthier I'm, I'm feeling more spry really yeah anyway <laughs> but i'm not that doddering like he is he ran. He, he he stopped in the middle of his conversation at the debate, and couldn't put sentences together. And then he said, "I think my time is up." <laughs> yeah, I think it is. Yeah, I, I you know I mean to think that he's the guy who can beat uh, Trump. I don't I think, think he can. I don't though. think he can. But I think Kamala Harris is somebody that he's not. Right expecting. now, she looks strong. She. I mean, well, it's a matter of we want somebody who, when there's a debate with him, will not take any shit from him. We want the person who, when he starts stalking her like he yeah. stalked Hillary Clinton, so will the turn sit, around sit and say, down. turn around and sit the fuck down. Right. And use the term fuck. I agree. You know. Is there any way to talk to the president? I think no. you should open up the phones now. Just so, so yeah, I can yeah. be here when you open them well, up. Well, you could stick around. Well, I'm sorry. You could stick around. I have to You have better things to do? Yes. What? Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> God forbid I should get eight hours. Oh, wow. You know something? I we've had your camera on most of this time. Uh, I'm sorry, folks. Now we have to look at you him. You see? That's how I fucked up. You know, the whole thing was me showing you her and not me. So. All right, turn it on. No, no, no. I, 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 this, I, I worked to get this whole shot, and then I didn't push the button for... You see, that's what's happening lately. I You're can't do this. You're becoming the new Joe Biden. I can't do this anymore. You're becoming Joe I, Biden. No, you know what it is? Because you came in and said, where are my fucking earphones? And I had to go running looking for them. And then I, well, anyway, hi, folks. You can see me now. All right, put it on. They, put can, it they on. can only hear you. Send, put it on. What? Because no, I, I'm not going to. I want to see people. Not yet. They're not going to call tonight. No watch, gonna call watch. Them. Nobody's going to call. Watch. Nobody's going to call. Please call. Please help me. Hmm? I'll just say. You, you could actually see it from over there. Can I roll over? No, 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 no. Rolling? Stay there. Oh, stay no, there. No, stay no, there for no. the time being I'm while I get this over. thing. I'm not even set up. Oh, well, I just want to watch. No. Yes. You, you're going to sit there like that? Look, there are two of you now. See that? I see that. That doesn't look good. I'll go back here. That doesn't look good. Okay. But you'll be able to see. Okay, so we'll let people call. And uh, it uh, please call, huh? I'm just talking. Yeah, I've please got the call. phones on. Nobody's gonna call tonight. No one wants to talk to old people. Nobody wants to talk to old people, right? Right. I'm sorry, folks, that I actually just had a shot of her, but then again, she looks better than I do. No, I don't. So this girl's tired. Hmm? I've been up since five. But you see how I fuck up lately? See mm. that? It's terrible. Uh, I'm losing it. Mm. I, five more minutes. Oh, me. here somebody is calling. Yeah. What, what do you know? Wait a minute. Hold on a second. It's Tom Yamaguchi. Hey, Tom. Wait a minute. 
Hold on a second. I got to do things here. Hold on it's a moment. It's nobody. Huh? It's nobody. It's nobody. It's hey, nobody. Tom. Yeah, let me see here. Let me, uh, let me, let me uh, put Tom. Uh, I've got to go get Tom in here. So hold on. I'm holding. This takes me a bit of work. This is not the easiest thing in the world. And considering how I'm fucking up tonight with everything. Uh, there, there we is. go. There we are. Okay. Hello, Hi. Tom. How are you? Hi. Hi. Well, see, you're, you're our caller for tonight. Yeah. How about that? A visit from the Crypt Keeper again. Huh? What? Art jo Artie Johnson is the latest death. Yes. Oh, yes. are we talking about that again? No. Uh, yeah. No, we're talking about Artie Johnson dying. Well, that's yeah. a death. Well, do you know who Artie Johnson was? No. See? She didn't even... Tell, him, tell her who Artie Johnson was. Have you ever seen Laugh-In? Rowan and Martin's yeah. Laugh-In? Yeah. Do you remember the, the, the German saying, very interesting, behind the potted plant? Kind of. He was kind him? Of. He was the guy? <laughs> yeah, it was Artie Johnson. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. So, it's 1027. So last, last night was Lee Iacocca. Yeah. So that's two more people who have died that we had forgotten were still alive. That's true. He, yeah, <laughs> sometimes when somebody dies, you go, is he still alive? Yeah. Well, well, well not was. anymore. You know. <laughs> uh, but Lee Iacocca... Quite he was a, 94. Yeah, quite a history with yeah, that guy. He you really know? was. You know? An amazing history, to tell you the truth. Uh, so how many people do you figure are going to call tonight? I don't know. You got me. I got you. Got me. Yeah. 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 Uh, and I talked to Marjorie about Philadelphia because you grew up in Philadelphia, right? The West Philadelphia. Yes, I did. I grew up in South Jersey. Really? I went to Overbrook High. Okay. Well, for a short time, I went to an Overbrook High in South Jersey. This is um, Overbrook like High was, in South Jersey. We're in that, South that, Jersey. And so it's out, it was in uh, Lindenwald, which is, you know, remember? Do you know the high speed line? No. Oh. I left I when they, I was they built 18. After, after you moved out. Yeah. The high, there's a, 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 a transit line that runs from Lindenwald to Philadelphia. Oh, side okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. so, so you, uh, you have memories about, uh, about Philadelphia. Oh, absolutely. And some of my best friends are still there. All right. Great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I have to get back there sometime. She has a lot of friends around here. I don't. Yeah, yeah. If I were back in San Francisco, gee, how many people? I was thinking today of all the people I could hang out with. You couldn't because nobody can afford San Francisco anymore. Well, so I'd move to, to... Richmond. <laughs> yeah. That's where you are, right, Richmond? No, well, I've been Berkeley. You're in Berkeley. Oh, oh okay. Berkeley would be nice. You know what I always liked about Berkeley? Uh, and and uh, stop me if I'm wrong. But Berkeley, as you enter, it says a, nucle a nuclear-free nuclear zone. Free zone. Really? Yeah. yeah. And I'm thinking to myself... Only in California. So a, a, a Russian bomber is flying over Berkeley. And right. they go, well, where, where should we drop the atomic bomb? And one guy looks at the other and goes, well, don't do it in Berkeley or we're in trouble. <laughs> well, you know, I found out, actually, and I had forgotten, but those signs are up as a result of an initiative in the 80s. Is a mm -hmm. part of this thing called the nuclear freeze moment movement. Yeah, and so they had an initiative that uh, that was basically no nuclear materials could be transported transported through Berkeley. However, that was ruled unconstitutional. The, we couldn't stop the government from moving the nuclear materials. So those signs are just rusting there. Um, you know, not you know, just not doing any good. But in order for them us to remove them, mm -hmm. we have to pass another initiative to take them down. Leave them up. I like that. It's you a, like the clear yeah. folk? Yeah. It's okay. Now, what, what was that? What, what was that supposed to be? Like no nuclear plants and things like that. No, not well, moving. It was mostly moving. geared toward nuclear weapons. And moving them through that. Yeah, and mostly moving. geared geared through nuclear weapons. But you know. Well, if you went up that corridor. Uh, you would have to necessarily go through Berkeley, right? It's about I-80? Yeah. 
Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah go right through Berkeley. So, in other words, if the government wanted to transport nuclear devices, they would have to then veer off and go over the bridge and go to San Francisco and then around and then to the you can't stop them. The Golden Gate Bridge and then over to the Richmond yeah, San Rafael Bridge and then on upward to wherever you're They're taking. taking them. Where they want to go. Yeah. Can't stop them. Not even our little signs will stop but them. But aren't you going to run out there and yell, hey, with your fist in the air, this is a nuclear free zone? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, no. I'm going to say goodnight. Oh, you're going to go? Oh, okay. Well, it's good past my bedroom. It's Marjorie. just me and him. The whole show is just me and him. I'll stay a few yeah. more minutes. Stay for a few minutes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is the only time she ever puts her arm around me. Well, you <laughs> never put your arm around me. There we, there we go. go. <laughs> Isn't that sweet? Anyway, so um, um, so you're going. Yeah. I'm yeah, fine. you're going. She's going. See ya. Yeah. Okay. Watch. She's going to walk out that door because that's the door. Here, move that. Okay. There you go. Okay. Thank you, dear. I appreciate it. Okay. All right, folks, we need some more people to call, too. Like, just to, two more would make a nice little gathering here, you know. I think you'll get them. Oh, uh, probably, eventually. I, I felt yeah. so bad. I, I'm so, fucking up so much. Like, when I, the first part of the program, uh, all I had was a shot of her. And I didn't switch the camera. That's how confused I, I got. And nobody noticed. And nobody noticed because nobody cared. You know. <laughs> and if you're listening to the audio of this, it doesn't even matter. You know. Right. Yeah. Exactly. But, but uh, because but I, I you know I do all this myself. I do all the switching. I do everything. You know. And it's uh, <sighs> anyway. So, how have you been, Tom? Oh boy, I'll tell you this. This this Trump is just. I just, I just, I, 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 I just can't believe it. It just gets, it gets more insane every day. Yeah. It, it just, you know, I, I just don't understand it. You know, it just, it just keeps getting more and more insane. Well, there's nothing much we can do about it. it it's just, it, it seems as though there's nobody there who monitors him. That you know that it can tell him no, don't do that. That's not a good idea, you know. Uh, and they and they and they uh, that's their way of handling it, you know. And and it's it's he's uncontrollable. I yeah. mean, this whole thing with this Fourth of July thing is just. I mean, he's costing the American public a fortune for a political campaign, you know, and for a political event. Mm -hmm. And that's not right, you know. No. So I mean, what are we going to do? What are we going to do with him? You know. Just it's, keep, just keep demonstrating, and uh, you know. Um, well, my question to you is: Are the are, do the Democrats look strong on any level? I believe so. You I believe so. You think so? How? Uh, well, I think we've got, as you were talking earlier, you, we've got some really, really good candidates. Uh, I know you don't care much for Elizabeth Warren. I think she's terrific. You no, know, but you, you think she's terrific, but we're not talking about that. I believe know. she's electable. I do. I believe she's electable. I believe Kamala Harris is electable. I, I believe uh, Julian Castro is definitely electable. I think we've got a lot of good candidates. And... And I am still committed to work for any of them. Well, uh, you know, Biden, to, to, even Biden. If Biden gets a nomination, uh, I will work for him. I'll do everything I can to get him in office. To not work for whoever is running uh, would be self-defeating. I mean, it's like those people, and and this happened, and this was sad when I heard that this happened, but. When um, uh, let me just turn up my fan a little bit here. There we go. Um, uh, it, last time when Bernie Sanders didn't get the nomination, the people who uh, were going to vote for Bernie Sanders and were Sanders fans, a lot of them went and voted for Trump. I mean, I how think do you? That, Benny, I think I think more the factor was there's a lot of people that just didn't vote. 
and unfortunately, they they were in those key states. Yeah. I mean, we've seen the studies. Uh, I I think there that certainly there were some people that did you know just you know refused to vote for for Hillary Clinton and and voted for Jill Stein or Bernie Sanders. But I think a lot of them just stayed home, unfortunately, and a lot of it was, and a lot of it was well. The, the, the Trump people were, were were pretty open that they were they felt that they could win if they could suppress the vote, mm -hmm. and they succeeded that with yeah. the help of the Russians. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. the Russians really targeted people's you know psyches, and convinced them that that uh, that you know to to not vote at all that that there was no difference between the two. Well, you know, I mean, the fact of the matter is Trump did not win the election. Uh, no. He won the electoral vote, and uh, that's because I think the Republicans played a better ground game, and that's a game we have to learn to well, play a little I, better. I think they had the Russians, huh. and well, no, I know, no, no, the Russians it, didn't do it because actually, Alex, if if you talk about ground game, they've been playing a ground a, a, a ground game called gerrymandering, and they've been playing that game for a long time. So in addition to having, uh, you know, the voter suppression, uh, whether it be, you know, uh, you know, people who have felonies can't vote, you know, things like that, they've also have gerrymandered districts so badly that it takes masses and masses of, of, of votes from people just to make a difference enough to actually carry a majority of the, of, of the, of the districts. Mm -hmm. It's just the it's it's just been the, the 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 burden has been put on us so much. We have to over overcompensate with turnout, and we did it. We actually did it in 2018. Yeah, well, we you know, I mean, I of course the electoral college has got got to be done away with. I don't know why anybody thinks that that's acceptable in this day and age. I mean, I'd like to know if I vote for somebody that my vote is being counted, not being bundled, okay, into a handful of votes. Yeah, uh, it's, it's a way of gerrymandering it in itself. It, and, yeah. you know, Vernon Nunn, is it Vernon? Yeah, Vernon Nunn and yeah. I have both talked about this uh, compact yeah. that if we have enough states that say, uh, we will, you know, we will give our electors to the, uh, the the candidate that wins the, uh, the the majority vote in the national election. Right. If you get right. enough, if you get over two hundred seventy uh, seventy electoral votes of states to do that, then that's then, then that solves our problem without uh, going through a constitutional yeah. amendment. Yeah, but I think I think we should just get rid of it. I mean, to, to do anything less is yeah, to let this. You, uh, is you have to, the Constitution. What I'm saying is we've got to get rid of it constitutionally. And the reason is as long as it's around, it's, it's, it's going to continue to haunt us. Uh, and uh, it's kind of like stuff in this country where we say, oh, well, it's only temporary, right? Well, you know, it was temporary. Income tax was temporary, all mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, and, and it certainly isn't any longer. Uh, whenever uh, we let something exist and we don't challenge it and we don't end it, then that thing's going to keep going and going and going. It's going to come back to haunt us over and over and over again. So uh, I, I, I think we've got to do away with that. I think we've got to do away with the primary system. I think the primary system is all wrong. Uh, we, we've gone through this before. I can't. I, I have to say I completely disagree with well, you. Well, but, the, but we, we only started having primaries, I think, in the 40s, Tom. No, they go back to about the turn of the century. No, I love, uh, well, they, They've actually, they've, they've been a process that's been slowly to getting on, you know, there's been more, more moving to the primaries, caucuses and primaries. But, but it's, yeah, it started about the turn of the century with the progressive, uh, the progressive movement. Yeah, I put yeah. In, I put in first primaries, and it's telling me when the first primaries are next year. Yeah, uh, boy, uh, no, I don't want that. Twenty twenty. No, I want uh, 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 first primary state. Uh, no, first primaries. Let me see here. Anything comes up? No, it doesn't. Well, oh, Democratic primaries. 
the United States prime, presidential primary. Uh, blah, blah, blah. They're held in various states, blah, blah, blah. Is there a history the background? Yeah. No provision for the role of the parties in the United States Constitution. Uh, founding fathers did not originally intend for American politics to be partisan. Mm -hmm. The Federalist Papers, number uh, 9 and 10, Alexander Hamilton and James Madison respectfully wrote specifically about the dangers of domestic political factions. Thus, in the first two presidential elections, the Electoral College, blah, 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 starting with the 1796 Congressional Party of State Legislature Caucus selected the presidential candidates. Before 1820, Democratic Republican members of Congress would nominate a single candidate for their party. That system collapsed in 1824, and since 1832, the preferred mechanism for nomination has been a national convention. Mm -hmm. The first national convention, blah, 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 then we get to the convention. Uh, progressive era reformers looked to it in the primary election as a way to measure popular opinion of candidates as opposed to the opinion of the bosses. Florida enacted the first presidential primary in... 1901. Okay. Okay. All right. So the primary system is over a little over 100 years. Well, it's about 120 years old, 118 years old. Okay. Um, but it was only used as a matter of finding a way of figuring out, you know, uh, who was popular and who wasn't popular. But the device is not called for in the Constitution. I right. don't think it's federally mandated. If I'm not mistaken, no, there are no provisions for a political it, party. It, it is p particularly; it's a party function, is what it is. Yeah. Like if you and I start a party tomorrow and we say Tom and Alex are going to get together and decide who's going to run for president, then that would be our nominee. Mm -hmm. Their method of doing it is holding these primaries, which then costs us money. But there's more, you know. There, there's more to it than that. There's a lot more to it than that. Mm -hmm. I mean, as you, as you, we said, you know, there are no provisions for, for political parties in the U.S. Constitution, but there are provisions in the state constitution simply because of those primary elections. So they have constitutional, like I, my, my, I've done all my voting in California, so I know, mm -hmm. uh, I know California. I know that, the, you know, in order to qualify for the ballot, you have had so many registered uh, voters. Uh, I'd have to get so many, uh, you know, percentage of the vote in each election to stay on the ballot. Yeah. So we have a primary ballot. Well, actually, we have a primary system that has a recognizes five or six primary uh, parties, five or six. Yeah, yeah. But we also now have a new system that's called the top two runoff. Uh, you know, the, the top two runoff. So regardless of party. When you have a primary election, mm -hmm. the first, the top two candidates then go on to the general election, yeah. and they could be two Democrats, they could be two Republicans, they could be a Green and a Republican, whatever, right. you know. Right. So, so there's so there's many ways to do primaries, mm -hmm. and and there's there's more than just presidential contest being being decided on. Yeah. You talk about state assembly, state senate, governorships, all down the line. All these are elections that would have happened anyway, regardless of when we're having a presidential election or not. Okay, well listen to this. By 1920, there were 20 states with primaries, but some went back and forth, uh, mm -hmm. back, and from 1936 to 1968, right, ready? Only 12 states used primaries. Mm -hmm. So the present primary system harkens back to at least 1968. Yeah. When there were only 12 states that did primaries. But they became popular because people found value in them. I, I think perhaps politicians found more value in them, you know, um, because I, I, you know, when I think about watching conventions, is anybody else going to call, by the way? Uh, I have to mention that every now and then. 
uh, you know, it's a, it's a holiday weekend, but, you know, maybe I should have just taken the whole week off and not just two days. Uh, uh, but when I was a kid, I specifically remembered conventions. And I remember how they would go into these conventions and they would start fighting with each other over who was going to be the nominee. And they had uh, caucuses within the convention. And the, all the politicking was the, was the, was the drama. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes there were as much as like 20 votes before they got themselves a nominee. And then when they were through, they presented this nominee to America. There were no primaries. You know, and and the election cycle, the election cycle went from whenever the convention was, in other words, the campaigning cycle went from whenever the election, the the convention was, until November, which in most cases was about after the last one was over with and they could start actually campaigning. There were only about three, four months. Now that's reasonable. Think of the money you're going to save to begin with. You know, well, then you're getting into other arguments regarding money and, and, and politics, which is separate from the from the primary. Well, I, money won't wouldn't matter as much in politics if you only had four months to go out and campaign. You know, uh, in fact, we could probably finance these parties to their campaign uh, and and take the money out of politics completely. Mm hmm. You know, sure. I'd, believe me, believe it or not, I would rather spend that money on people campaigning than on a fucking parade uh, in <laughs> Washington, D.C. Uh, better get back to that again. Yeah, yeah. That is insane. That is oh. just insanity, you know. Yeah. So what are we, what are we going to do about him? We can't do anything about him. You I'll know? try my best. Uh, mm -hmm. Last uh, Sunday at the the Pride Parade, mm -hmm. I marched for the whole contingent of people uh, uh, with uh, with uh, under the banner of "Need to Impeach" to impeach Donald Trump. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, I was marching with uh, Tom Steyer. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I got a picture with me next to him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nice guy. Real what, nice guy. What is that feedback? That's strange. Oh, I think that's my mail. Let me turn off my, my mail. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I, have my... I guess it's just going to be you and I, Tom. If you don't mind. No, Oops. I don't mind, but I may cut it off early rather than put the strain on us, you know. Well, I don't feel any strain. Hmm. Um, you know, I had a busy day, as usual, on Wednesdays, but I'm all, I'm feeling relaxed. Well, actually, I'm, I'm physically feeling better than I was feeling for a while. Uh, I've been sick for the last three, four weeks with this, whatever it was, but it seems to have subsided now that I'm taking the, the pills. Okay. Five pills to a happier life, you know. So, <laughs> so I'm, I'm feeling healthier than I was. However, I think it's made me gain weight. I'm up to 197 pounds. I'd gone all the way down to about 185 and uh, uh, I took the presence zone, and I noticed my weight was going up really fast. And supposedly because it, it uh, retains water, sodium, and potassium, and things like that. So, but I feel better, you know. And my pants aren't taped, so I'm fine. Okay. Well, yeah. that's good. So yeah. anyway, so is anybody going to call? Come on, there's got to be a couple of people out there. I, I, everybody's away. Let's see. Phil isn't here tonight. Okay. No, no disappointment for you. No. Uh, uh, um, uh, Scott isn't available. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, he went to some concert. A yeah. patriotic concert. Yeah. Uh, let me see here. Uh, who else uh, isn't available? Uh, the, uh, most people. I, I, I don't know where Kevin is. I haven't heard from Ray Renati in weeks. He's uh, probably busy. He's probably got some no, active he, he, stuff. He went on some vacation or something like that. How dare he? <laughs> you know, how dare he? So somebody, you know, if you've never called this program before, just go to Skype and just uh, type in Skype Live, and it'll call me, and we'll put you on, put you, put your lovely picture on the on the on the TV here. Yeah, Isn't yeah. It? Be able to even be able to express yourself without having to compete with a bunch of. 
with a bunch of, I mean, well this is a good time for the for the amateurs the ones who have never done it before to do it because I think some people don't do it don't call the show because they're a little intimidated yeah. by the fact these other people are so used to it right and so into it that uh, they don't you know they don't call mm -hmm. uh, so it, it, now's your chance folks you know it's just Tom and I and we're just two really nice guys who listen to what you have to say <laughs> without interrupting and yeah. you know um uh, and not that we don't like a good fight now and then you know good spirited political discussion never hurt anybody you oh, know what yeah. you know what i've gotten into what what we've watched because girlfriend made me watch it and and i had never seen the show uh we're watching we're binge watching the west wing Mm -hmm. uh, did you ever watch The West Wing? No, I you know I have not watched very much television the past few decades. Yeah, yeah. You know, I just my I, my my schedule has been just I don't know. Yeah, I hear it's a great show, but I've never yeah. really watched well, it. Well, uh, I you know I watched it. Uh, I'm watching. We're in the third season, and that's about as far as I'm going to go because I hear it goes downhill from there. <clears throat> um, uh, but uh, I've been watching it. And, and to begin with, the other day, I'm talking with Ronnie, right? And I went, you know, so I've been watching The West Wing. She goes, you never watched The West Wing? Like I committed the sin, <laughs> you know, that I had never watched The West Wing. And I said, no, I haven't. I, you know, I never watched The West Wing. I'm sorry, you know. Uh, uh, and so I'm watching it now. And she said, what do you think? And what's interesting about it is, you know, a show like that could get very old because it was done in uh, the 90s. Uh, well, it was done the end of the 90s. In fact, there was a show we watched that was the first show that went on the second year. OK, or was it the third year? Oh, it was the third year that they went on. And it went on right after 9-11. And the first episode was a special episode that had nothing to do with the rest of the series. Um, and, um, and it was a very good show, but it talked about, you know, people are different than we are and why do they want to attack us and things like that. I mean, it was very interesting. And there was a beginning they had for it, but they didn't put it on Netflix. And that was where the cast, for about two or three minutes, discussed that this episode was a standalone and that was not to be put in the context of the whole series because they had left it off with, uh, uh, with uh, you know, the president deciding whether he was going to run or not or something. And then they were coming back to this, which didn't have anything to do with that. You know, it wasn't the cliffhanger you wanted to see the resolution for. Mm -hmm. And so it was 2011, the first season started. Excuse me, 2001, the first season, the second, third season started. And um, what I found interesting about the show is it holds up because a lot of the political problems they're attending to on this show still exist. You know, <laughs> you would think after, what, 18 years that we would have, you know, this would have, you'd watch this show and it would be one big anachronism, and it's not. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's that's what I found so interesting about it. Uh, it, it you know, it it uh, it was a well written show, uh, well conceived. I think Aaron Sorkin, who wrote it, pushed himself too hard and wrote almost every episode for four years, and he became a cocaine addict because of it. I mean, he <laughs> he became so stressed, and finally. He decided to quit the show uh, just about the time NBC said, we think you better, because it was getting to the point where he couldn't deliver the shows fast enough to make air dates, because he was writing every one of them. And I mean, he's a terrific writer, but we're also, we're not talking about Netflix here. We're not talking about 10 episodes, eight episodes. We're talking about 22 episodes a year. Yeah. So I'm watching him in the third year, by the time I see the end of the third year, he will have written 66 episodes. That could drive any man out of his mind. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know, 
Yeah. You know, you know, it's funny. We got a lot of people watching us. Just nobody calling us. <laughs> this is a strange thing. So what else you want to talk about, Tom? Go ahead. It's all yours. <laughs> well, I'll tell you. Um, this thing with uh, with the uh, with the Betsy Ross flag. I've been pondering. Yeah, I pondered it too. This was the thing, in case people are not familiar with what he's talking about. This was Kevin Kaepernick. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah and who, who, who complained that Nike, who he is a spokesperson for, was coming out with July 4th fly, uh, 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 shoes. They were red, white, and blue. And on the back, they had the American flag, but they were, it was Betsy Ross's American flag. Yeah. You know. Colin yeah. Kaepernick. Colin Kaepernick. Colin Kaepernick. Colin Kaepernick. Yeah. Uh, and, um, and 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 uh, you know, it's the Betsy Ross flag where the stars are in a circle. Well, they yeah. call it the Betsy Ross flag. And one thing, you know, um, for a couple decades now, I've been involved with the uh, Society of Friends, mm -hmm. and uh, and we do Betsy Ross as a Quaker, and. Uh, in fact, she was a part of a faction that called themselves the Free Quakers. Mm -hmm. And those were, of course, you know, the Quakers traditionally opposed war. Mm -hmm. But this faction broke off supporting the, the uh, American Revolution. Yeah. And so there was a big schism yeah. uh, within Quakers about support for the war. Most of them uh, either were just didn't support anybody or actually were loyal to the king. Mm -hmm. But but this this faction and they actually ended up up you know actually creating their own old meeting houses. So so I thought that was really interesting. And now mm -hmm. I'm discovering, thanks to all this big controversy, she didn't design the flag. She didn't design it. Really? It turned out there was another guy who signed uh, the Declaration. Uh, of independence that actually came up with the design. Oh, you know something? I as I heard that years ago that w the, the the concept that she designed the flag is separate from the fact that she sewed the flag. Right. She didn't design it. She sewed it. That was her. She was she the seamstress. Sewed flags. Yeah. And the myth got started for, I think it was her grandson decided he was going to create this myth that she actually designed the flag, and she actually had, he actually constructed this conversation between Ross and and uh, and Washington mm -hmm. about about oh how we'll make the star, should we make them six point oh, let's make them five points, blah blah blah. Yeah, and it's all it's it turns out it's it's just totally false. It's just just mythology. It just yeah. created... Oh, oh, before you go on, by the way, I noticed that Scott Boddicker is writing us now. If you can write us, Scott, you can call. Just to fill up a square. You don't even have to talk. Anyway, uh, so I, I think I seem to have remembered that, that she didn't design the flag. She Somebody came to her and said, can you sew this for us? Because she did this. Or was right. That was her church out. That was, that was her, her profession. She actually did flags. Yeah, she did sewing. She did upholstery. Yeah, okay. So, I mean, she was a seamstress, seamstress. basically. Yeah, yeah okay. Uh, but uh, I don't, I'm not bothered. You know, I mean, I'm sorry, Kaepernick, but, you know, there are a lot bigger fights to fight than this one. You know, this is a part of American history, and the flag didn't represent slavery. It was the flag that was flying over slavery, Okay. Uh, and I don't think it created slavery or enhanced slavery in any way. Would you, would you agree with that, Tom? One thing I'm sort of really confused, that's why I'm sort of, you know, just still pondering, because I'm still confused as to what the exact argument was. Part of it I'm hearing is that right-wing groups, white supremacist groups, are actually now uh, trying to incorporate the 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 uh, that 13 star flag into their you know their memes let's say mm -hmm. just like the confederate flag or like the the tea party has with the with the gadsden flag you know mm -hmm. the don't tread on me right and so my so 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 my argument about that is there was a um 
There was a, a, a short docu documentary that came out last year. It was actually nominated for Academy Award. And I saw it online, Kazoo Tight. <laughs> you turned off your mic. Yes. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> You're it's allergic a, it's to a, me. It's allergies. It's allergies. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead with what you were saying. Anyway, so, so there was a, a doc, short documentary that came out. I actually saw it online. It was nominated for Academy Award. It didn't win. But it was called A Night at the Garden. And I don't know if you heard of it. No. But it basically no. was a Nazi rally at Madison Square Garden in the 30s. Okay. And this big Nazi rally, they had American flags, they had big portraits of George Washington, maybe uh, Thomas Jefferson, all the founding fathers. And so, like, here we're, I mean, we're looking at Nazis. And there are glorifying, you know, they're, 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 they're wrapping themselves around the flag. So in a way, I mean, are, are you going to argue, well, we can't, you know, we have to, uh, you know, repudiate our, 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 our founding fathers simply because our, you know, founding parents. We have to repudiate them because, because Nazis tried to coerce, you know, tried to co-opt them in the 30s. It just doesn't make well, any I mean, sense. I mean, uh, uh, to begin with, our original leaders were slave owners. So do we. So do we pull down every portrait of Washington? Do we pull down every uh, Jefferson, portrait yeah. of Jefferson? Yeah. Uh, Jefferson even had a child by a, a black slave that he owned named Sally Hemings. Right. Who yeah. he, he carried on a long affair with, took with him to Paris, where she was the toast of Paris. Yeah. But nevertheless, she was a slave all along. You sure. Know? Sure. Uh, so, I mean... Uh, just because that existed, do we pull down? Oh, here comes here comes Kevin. Oh, Ke Kevin is going to allow us to have uh, a, uh, a a face here, an extra face here. Here we go, Hog Rider. Hello, Kevin. How are you? Thank you oh, for yeah, calling. Looks like Tom. Thank you for calling. I tonight was going to be a sparse night. I just knew it. <laughs> I was watching the last couple minutes to see if anybody was on, and it was just you and Tom, and I thought, oh, what the heck? Oh, yeah, well, now you can really get a word in edgewise. Yeah, where's where's Phil? Uh, Phil, he's out beating up on old people with his photographs. Oh, it's uh, <laughs> beat up on the old guy Wednesday, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, anyway, that's Kevin, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, in case you've never joined us before. He's a regular caller. And if Scott would call, we could put him in that bottom square right down uh, down. Uh, uh, Come there, on, Scott. There. Go get yourself a scotch and call in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anyway, you know, so I think that Kaepernick's a little off base on this one, you know. Yeah, uh, I have to agree with you on that. And, and I... quite frankly, what's he doing harping on Nike, a company which has been very good to him and supported his cause? You know, uh, I think that's kind of like eating your own, you know. But there's another dimension to this. Yeah. And that is putting a flag on a pair of sneakers. Isn't that a really tacky idea? <laughs> well, I don't think it's any tackier than wearing a pin in your lapel with the yeah. American flag and saying, see how patriotic I am? You know, it's so jingoistic. The easiest thing in the world is to stick that pin, you know? Yeah. So, yes, Kevin. Looks like you want to say something. Yes, I think you're right. But I, the sneakers, I think, is like what Tom said. I don't know. It's a little bit, a little different. I think the pin is okay. It's a lapel pin, you know. Well, it's, what's the difference? It's still decoration. Well, the, the sneakers on your foot, I guess, would be a little different. You're well, grinding not, it into no, the wait, ground. Wait, 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 if you want to get wait, that wait, way wait, about it, I don't know. The flags aren't on the bottom of the shoe. They aren't on the bottom yeah, of the I, shoe. I, I get it. I get it. But, you know, whatever. You know. I mean, I just... It's the I, same thing as somebody wearing a shirt. I, I, you know, I, when I do the elections, I wear this big flag shirt. And that, it seems corny to me. But do you know corny? Do you remember a few years, many, not that far back, my old friend Abby Hoffman used to have an American flag shirt, and they tried to keep oh, him oh, from yeah. wearing it. They oh, said yeah. that was a desecration of the flag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Oh, Alex, you reminded me of something I've always wanted to talk to you about. Yeah. Abby Hoffman put out an album called Wake Up America. Yes, he did. Yeah. And were you, did you, were you involved in that at all? I guess not. I'm trying to remember if I was on there or something. I just don't remember. Because I remember it was like, uh, part of it, I because I remember was because he was, um, you know, they they he uh, he was they had a recording of giving a speech. He says, "Anybody mind if I take off my jacket?" And then, of course, he had his shirt on, you know, yeah. American flag shirt. Um, but uh, part of it I heard was a uh, was a radio interview he was doing, and he was doing a, a something where people would call in, and he they would answer questions. You know, try to ask her questions about the plagues or something like that. And I'm just wondering if, if that might have been one of your radio shows. Could have been. You know, I don't remember. It's funny how little I remember, you know, when, when you go back that far. And if you think about it, uh, that was uh, 19, uh, that was the 1970s. Yeah. How many, fact, how, many year, how many years ago was that, Tom? In fact, here's one of the things. He, he one of the things he says in this album is we bombed in New Haven and we're going to bomb in San Diego in 72. You know what that reference was? The Republican convention mm -hmm. was originally scheduled to be in San Diego in 1972 because Nixon wanted it there. He called it his lucky little city. Yeah. And and so when you when you talk about, you know, the, the plumbers and those uh, those plots to kidnap, uh, uh, you know, r r radicals and, and take them over the border. They were going to take them over to Tijuana. So that so that was before they they moved the convention to Miami. Oh, okay, all right. And then they they did do the convention in Miami, and um, God, Abby had some stories about Miami, and he and Mike Wallace, and them hanging out together. Uh, but anyway, um, I don't remember, um, but anyway, what I was going to say about Abby, see, he had the American flag shirt. And a lot of times he would go to a TV show and they wouldn't let him on because he was wearing the American flag shirt. That was disrespectful. Mm -hmm. and, and what I suggested is that even back then we had the technology called chroma key. Why don't you just take the shirt and take the color blue <laughs> and, and put red over it, and it'd be the same color shirt. <laughs> you know, it wouldn't be yeah. uh, it wouldn't be the American flag shirt. But anyway, uh, he, he, you know, so today what you're wearing is kind of a what can we call it, affectation or whatever you you wear it for, well, Kevin. And it's because it, of those days that when yeah. I when I was picking out that shirt, because you know, you go to these websites now. There's millions of shirts with all kinds of flag crap all over them. Yeah, and. And I sit there for hours and look at them, and I think about back to the Abbey days, and I go, well, should I get that one? No, that looks too, that looks like it's desecrated. Because they're just plastered all over the place. And I go, no, nah, that looks like it wouldn't work. No, nah, no, no, that looks too desecrating. You know? And I just, you know, I discriminate the hell out of them. And then I finally pick one that's all subdued and whatnot. But yeah, it's still got a flag and a stripe on it, you know that kind of thing. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, uh, uh, Abby wore it, and uh, he he wore it for a purpose. I mean, I said to him that I, one time I went over to his house for dinner, uh, because he was a great cook, by the way. That was the night I met Tennessee Williams, um, and um, he, uh, I said, okay, where's the closet? And he said, what closet? I said, the one with all the American flag shirts. <laughs> you know, and he took me to a closet, and there were about ten of them in there. Yeah. <laughs> but were they were they actually made out of flag material? No, they were they were. I, I, they were just commercial. No, shirts nobody took or... a flag and chopped it up and made it into a shirt. No. no. Yeah, because that was a big thing. Is people would do that. I don't know where he got them though, because that was not an easy thing to find. I'm sure. Maybe he did find right. somebody who made them. And he started wearing them publicly, and then that caused the furor, you know. That's where people got really worked up, was when they made them out of the actual flag. Yeah. Well, I always, here's what I always thought was ridiculous about the American flag. All these people who felt there should be penalties for burning the flag. 
They well, burn them when they're that's done. That's what you do with a flag yeah. when it's no longer going to be yeah. used. In yeah. fact, if you're folding a flag and it falls on the ground, you're supposed, you're supposed to destroy to burn it. it. You're supposed to burn it. Yeah. So what was so wrong with burning the flag? They were going to make a law against it. It's against the law to burn the American flag. Well, how, yeah, do, how do we get rid of them? Do we just let them rot? Yeah. You know. uh, but you see, it's all that jingoism that I hate. I, I, because uh, I honestly believe people go, well, you know, you have to say the Pledge of Allegiance because you have to pledge allegiance to, uh, well, it's just to the flag. It's not even to some mm -hmm. ideal. Uh, and and uh, you have to pledge allegiance to the flag. And a guy who's like, let's say, a communist spy, if he's somewhere and everybody's doing the Pledge of Allegiance, you don't think he's going to put his hand up to his heart and say it to pass? Come on, yeah. it's the easiest thing in the world to do. Actually, you remember last night... Oh, you you're no... Wait a minute, let me finish. Oh, you're no longer a communist now because you pledged allegiance to the United States of America. Yes, Tom. Yeah, I was going to say that, you know, last night you were talking about the insertion of um, under God into the uh, into yeah. the pledge. Yeah. And actually... Yeah, that was done in 54, mm -hmm. and uh, that was done in response to the fact that they discovered that the Communist Party was starting their their meetings with the Pledge of Allegiance. And they were so outraged at this, as well, do you, you know, we'll teach these godless communists something. We'll put this phrase in it. You, and know? you don't think they're going to say under God? I mean, come on. They, they're, they're spies. They want to get away with it. It's their job. Yeah, you know that—that's what I found so really terrible was just that whole concept of, uh, and I did—I didn't like the idea of having to pledge allegiance. Um, to begin with, it starts out I pledge allegiance to the flag, mm -hmm. which is really you know, come on, it's just a fucking flag. It's uh, a and, symbol. And the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands. I mean, why do I have to pledge allegiance to it? I, it, it my allegiance to my, to my country, to that flag, should be assumed. Okay? I, it shouldn't be questioned. I shouldn't have to do a pledge. You know, am I wrong? Am I, am no, I being like I Colin so. Kaepernick now? <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I just find it... Uh, I find all those things jingoistic, and that's what I guess bothers me about what's going on in Washington. This asshole actually thinks that by bringing in tanks and flying jets overhead and Air Force One, I mean, and he says, well, we have them. They're free. They're ours. Yeah, but the gas is it, okay? You got to pay for the gas. And by the way, who are you paying for the gas from, you know? And who are they paying to truck all those tanks in? And yeah. Who are they paying to put up all those stages and connect those wires and put up all those videos? And, and you can bet yeah. your life tomorrow night he's going to give a speech where he's going to say something bad about the Democrats. And how good the economy is. Yeah, but, but he's going to say bad things about the Democrats. It's going to wind up being a political speech. And if it does, I think we should charge the Republican Party for the bill. You know, why should we be paying for it? You know, right. folks, when you say, oh, well, gee, it's going to be nice. It's going to do a wonderful thing in Washington, blah, 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 blah. Uh, folks, this is costing at least $2.5 million, which isn't a lot of money in government money. They waste far more than that. But it's $2.5 million. How much did you pay in taxes last year? Was it $2.5 million? I don't think so. Maybe was it a couple of thousand? Ah, Okay. How about that money is now being pissed away on this mm -hmm. jingoistic piece of shit he's going to do tomorrow night? In the meantime, we've got people in cages on the border. Yeah. They can't even get toothbrushes. They can't even get soap. They don't have any showers. I mean, this is, it's just so morally offensive. I just can't believe it. By the way, we have a lot of people watching right now. Maybe this is the new format. Anyway. <laughs> You know, it, that's something we should get into. Uh, and that is 
I, I just begin to wonder, you know, where is the United Nations? Where are those organizations which normally would come to the foreground in a time of crisis of this sort? Uh, nobody internationally is speaking up for these Mexicans who are coming, or these South Americans who are coming up and are now in the middle of a major humanitarian crisis. And yet, mm -hmm. is the UN holding a hearing on it or holding a meeting about it to sanction the United States for the way they're treating these people? No. These people are really on their own. Yeah. I, I think that they've become just like the, uh, the Republicans and everybody else. They just don't want to say nothing about Trump. They're just waiting his time and they don't want to, they don't want to, they don't want to stir him up and they're just they're just waiting to see but, what's going to happen. Isn't this with why him. we have a United Nations? Isn't this I why know. we have international courts for this sort of thing? I mean, this is a humanitarian tragedy that's going on yep. right now of a, of, a, of 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 an amazing uh, uh, breadth and width. And and the fact is that uh, nobody's doing anything about it. Nobody has the balls to stand up to him. Yeah. And, and that's the problem because he knows he's gonna he's gonna mouth off and fire off and and but that's do what all he well and good. But you know when Syria had the problems that Syria had, there were people yelling humanitarian crisis. Nobody yeah. was afraid of Syria. Um, why isn't why is it the UN has been so quiet about this thing, and it has turned into a humanitarian crisis, which is exacerbated by Donald Trump. And by him almost putting a, 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 a wooden chip on his shoulder and saying, knock it off to the people of South America, who all decided, well, fuck them, we're coming up. You yeah. know? I mean, he caused the crisis. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And when you talk about the United Nations, we do not even have a United Nations ambassador. Uh -oh. We don't have anybody yeah. in that channel. Ray Renati just wrote, Ray, where are you? He says, I only <laughs> pledge allegiance to Trump's hair. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, it, it is, it is, uh, it's a sad thing that's going on. And when you see those pictures of those kids, and when you see those cages, and then none of that's doctored. Those are actual photographs. And you know what yeah. Trump wrote today, one of his little tweets? Well, they wouldn't have to be in this trouble if they hadn't tried to come up. Well, that's not the point. The point is the crisis exists. Now, what are you going to do to help other human beings out of a crisis? You know, and I, he's not doing anything. He's spending too much time buying the crepe paper for his parade tomorrow. <laughs> yep. You know. I think, unfortunately, the problem is he doesn't see them as human beings. Uh, yeah. He does. He, he sees them as animals, you know, subhuman. Ray says he's in his car. So. Oh, okay. Well, okay. He's called from his car before. Yeah, yeah he has called it from his car before. Uh, if oh, from Costco. <laughs> you, you know, if, if he called right now, this would be like a whole Bay Area show tonight. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Ray, Ray says he'll call in soon. Okay, Ray. So that would be an all Bay Area show. That's terrific. So how come I'm not on the air in San Francisco? Yeah, I hear who wants. I've heard lately who wants to live in San Francisco. That everybody has told me if I came back, I would be sorely disappointed. It's different out here since you've been here. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it supposedly has gotten really skeezy. Um, yeah. You know. It's different. Well, to begin with, I don't think even I could afford to live there. You know. <laughs> That's I never could afford to live there. I mean, you know, there, there, uh, uh, um, <laughs> uh, uh, Bubbles' uh, uh, landlord is like the Grim Reaper sitting around with a scythe waiting for him to go. <laughs> you know, because he's got that place for 900 a month or something like that, 700 a month. Wow. Oh, geez. Yeah. But he's been there 35 years. Yeah, yeah. You know, so. Um, 
But anyway, but it, it just the whole thing going on. Uh, let me ask you this, okay? Since we, it, it's so wonderful here because there's a free air here tonight that we don't normally have. Because anytime I would say something like this, somebody would jump in on the conversation. What do you think of AOC? I like her. I like her a lot. I do. She's I mean, really smart. She's a she, she's a snarky broad. She don't hold back. No, she's no, she, and she has. You know, usually when you're a first-year congressman, you're the lowest of the low. You're on the bottom of the pecking order. Nobody ever hears from you. <laughs> she she hit the ground running. Mm-hmm. Well, she's got some experience. She's got some skills. She's got a couple of things going for her. Number one, yeah. she speaks well. She speaks her, her case well, okay? But secondly, she's so goddamn good-looking that the press eats her up. Because they love to have her on camera. So she's got two things going for her that are very strong. The thing she doesn't have going for her, she's too young to run for president, so you know, we'll have to wait a while. Well, that'll change. Yeah. <laughs> oh, she'll be, a, if she stays in Congress, if something doesn't happen and she stays in Congress, uh, she will, I'm sure, run for president when it, at the first possible opportunity, which is still, what, something like seven, eight years away? Well, she, well, she's what, 30, 31? No, she, I think she's 29. Okay. All right. All right, seven years away. Yeah. <laughs> well, that would be good. She'd get some experience, you know. Yeah. Unlike a uh, few people that we know who weren't experienced. Obama didn't have much experience, you know. He, he had only been a senator for, I think, uh, less than two years before he decided to run. But he had been in the, the uh, Illinois state legislature. Yeah, but that's not, you know, it's not the same thing. You know? I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean yeah, as, as people go, he, he, he's had, you know, he, his experience is weak. Yeah. But it's sure a lot more than Donald Trump. <laughs> well, who makes the best presidents? Usually it's governors. And most of the people who run are governors, oddly enough. Uh, because being a senator is not a, an executive position. Uh, and um, uh, he did a, um, I think Obama learned fast. I think he was a fast learner. Mm -hmm. But he had to learn a skill set that he really never had had to do before. And that's the same with anybody, any, any senator who would suddenly become president. I mean, uh, People who are uh, governors are executives, and so all the things they would do as president, they're simply doing in a magnified form, at a, at a lesser magnified form when they're when they're a governor. So. Yeah, but still, I mean, even anybody who comes in the president uh, job of, of, of president is going to be lacking in something that the, the job needs because it is such an all-encompassing job, because it, because. You know, it's more than just the, that that administrative experience. I mean, you really have to know a lot on, on foreign policy. I yeah. mean, you you really have to know a lot well, about inter he, he, international relations, which senators, you know, are, are have a lot of experience. Yeah, but in, if you think about it, think back on our presidents. Okay, how many of them have come from the uh, executive br branch or an executive branch in a state? And how many have come from a legislative background? Uh, you, you go back to Nixon was a vice president. Reagan was a governor. Bush was a governor. Clinton was a governor. Uh, who else? Uh, let's think of some more uh, presidents. Uh, uh, Eisenhower was an executive in that he ran the military. Yeah, he was our last general. Yeah. Um, Harry Truman was a vice president. Uh, I'm trying to think of who else in my lifetime was president. Gerald Ford, I don't think was he was a he well he was had been a vice president. So yeah, he was yeah yeah he was went from the uh, House Minority Leader to uh, to vice president to president. Yeah. Jimmy Carter was a governor. Yeah. So you can it, it, going back, it's very hard to find somebody outside of Obama who was like a senator. Well, Kennedy. Ken Kennedy. Kennedy was a senator. You're absolutely right. Yeah. But part of it also is the fact that as a as a as a as a as a governor or as a as a state 
person from coming from the state, you can sort of run as an outsider. Like the problem with having a, with a senator or the Congress, like Joe Biden is having, yeah. they have to run. They have a, a voting record that they have to 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 deal with. So once you have a voting record, then people can pick you apart that way. We have a couple of governors running on the Democratic slate, right? We have Hickenlooper, uh, Jake who I'm supporting, Hensley, yeah. Um, but uh, uh, the, the, you know, there, there's something to be said also. The the be- thing that Joe Biden has going against him, among a raft of things, okay. <laughs> Uh, is the fact that he has been around for so long, there's a record. Right. And there's a record that people can jump on. And some really horrendous things he's done in his time. He's done some great things, too, but he's done some horrendous things as well. Nita Hill being one of the most egregious. Mm -hmm. Um, But uh, he has so many things that are a problem that way that you begin to wonder, uh, you know, does he have a chance because of all of that? When you think of the other people that are running, for instance, um, um, uh, what, what's her name, the one who went after Biden? At the end? Kamala. K- Kamala, Kamala, Harris. Kamala Harris. They took, Kamala, he took a bite yeah, in the polls. Yeah, Kamala Harris has a very small history. It's, it's a rich one. It's an accomplished one. But it's it's not there's not a lot there for people to sink their teeth into. Oh, mm-hmm. maybe that it was suspected that she had an affair with Willie Brown, but outside of that, you know, I'm so sick of hearing that. Yeah, I, Trump would not be the person to bring that up. Okay. Yeah. Well, he's got other people to do it for him, so uh, that's I'd rather so, just part. So I was thinking about that the other day, and when, or actually this afternoon when I saw those those new poll numbers, yeah. the uh, when when um, and Buttigieg and and Kamala both moved up pretty good, and Buttigieg he took on a bunch of money this last week too. Yeah, that'd be interesting to see a Kamala Harris and Buttigieg ticket. That that's what people are talking about. I I, I think that'd be pretty cool. Uh, uh, somebody Zim here wrote uh, she should replace Nancy Pelosi. Well, she can't. He was, he was a, talking about she's a, she's a, no, she AOC. <laughs> he was oh. talking about AOC. Oh, Zim was talking about. Yeah, AOC? I saw that go up when you, we were talking oh, about AOC. Oh, okay, because oh, uh, the okay. Nancy. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Kamala Harris is a uh, a, a senator. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I think I think Kamala Harris so far, okay floats my boat because she's tough because she won't wouldn't let trump we're, 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 the name of the game here is to beat trump okay the name mm-hmm. of the game here isn't who has the best ideas all right but who can beat trump i don't think elizabeth warren can beat trump because she's too professorial she's very smart she's got great ideas uh and uh but i don't think she could win the presidency from Donald Trump. He would eat her fucking alive. All right? I don't don't believe that. We need somebody who's so tough that they're not going to let Trump get away with shit. Period. See, and I I had a little bit less of a view of... Because I guess I I haven't really watched her that much of Warren, but over the debate time, I got... A little bit warmed up to her. Oh, I a warmed bit up. More. I warmed up to her much more once I heard yeah. the debates and I heard what yeah. she had to say. And then I said to myself, but "Can still, she beat? Can she win the election?" And yeah, my answer is, "I just is, don't know if she could take it." Because we need a campaigner. That's really what we need, and it's what we don't have is a campaigner in this particular situation. And uh, you know, it's. Um, um, uh, I, I really think she's uh, I think I think that uh, Kamala Harris is is terrific, but we have to wait and see what happens. You got to realize this election is still how many months away? Mm-hmm. A, a, a year and five months away. Mm-hmm. Come on, you don't know by then if Kamala Harris is going to be alive, you know, yeah. or whether Joe Biden is not going to be using a walker, you know. I mean. Here's the problem with Biden, and and I and my 
my ex-wife, she couldn't say this because she hates to get ageist. But well, she we heard her. But huh? We listened to her, Alex. Well, <laughs> At she, least I did. She kind of sounded like she was going. He's a little doddering. Right. You know. Yeah. You know, like I mean, I know what it's like to be doddering because I am. But when I see a guy crawl up to a stage and stand at a podium and 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 look like he doesn't exactly have it all together, that's not the kind of energy I want for a man in the White House. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I don't know how much realistically Trump has in energy in the White House, but certainly he has a lot more than that. You know. It's just being used in all kinds of bizarre ways that aren't really very productive. Yeah, because I look at him that way, too. I look at him like he's doddering. Obama <laughs> was the perfect age for a president these days. Yes. In this day and age. 50 years ago, maybe not so much so. But in this day and age, Obama was the perfect age. Clinton was the perfect age. And he walked out right at the right time, too. Bush was, was the perfect age. Okay, that that round in that area, you know, uh, 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 Obama, I think, was elected, what, at 48, something like that? No, younger than that. Really? Uh, was he younger? Yeah, sort of early to mid 40s. By the way, talk about somebody who looks like he's having a great time with his life right now. Oh, yeah. He looks like he's so happy not to be president anymore and to be able to just be a celebrity. You know? Right. Uh, and he's li very likable. I mean, he, he and his wife. I mean, what a great... You know, I often pointed them out saying, you want to you have a president and have the president be... Because a president is, uh, sets the moral tone of a country. That's why, that's what bothers me most about Trump, is that mm -hmm. he's setting a certain moral tone, a sense of permissiveness, you know, whatever. What Obama did was show America what a perfect loving family was you know and you know and she's written in her book the two of them have fought in their time they've had some knocked out dragged out fights mm -hmm. but they still had a lovely lovely family and they raised two lovely daughters in the light of just this glare mm -hmm. of the white house i mean how hard and how difficult must it have been for them to raise those kids in that situation? They brought the grandmother oh, insanely in. insanely crazy. They, they brought the grandmother in to help, you know. Yeah. But they did it. And, and, the and two those kids, kids were right at that time when everything's going crazy from, from you know, just before high school, into high school. It's raging hormones. Oh, <laughs> raging hormones. Yeah. I got one right next door in the room next to me. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Raging and hormones. holy crap. Yeah. And two of them? Oh. And they, yeah. they did such a beautiful job of raising those kids. I always look to, my, my admiration goes to when you look at the kids people raise. Yep. And how those kids turn out. And the, and those kids, uh, you don't you know you don't hear anything terrible about them, you know. Nope. Maybe they go out sometimes partying when they shouldn't be, but it's being a kid. You well, know? even when you look at uh, Chelsea Clinton, she did grow well for herself too. She, uh, that, well, I often pointed to that. I often yeah. said that for whatever you think of Bill Clinton, cheater, whatever. Uh, the two she of them made it through. The two of them raised that kid beautifully, you know. And she never had a problem. And uh, uh, they were a loving family. She was the one that kind of kept the family together during the whole I Monica Lewinsky so. thing. <laughs> I think so, too. You know? Uh, and uh, then people point out with the Clintons, well, look at what he did. and Look what he did with Monica Lewinsky. Well, I would have done the same thing with Monica Lewinsky. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I understand, you know? The slightly portly chick who's hot for the, the older man... Hey, she likes I'm, cigars. <laughs> if I'm if I'm that older guy, I'm gonna I you know it's my last chance. Okay, it's my my last chance at youth. But anyway, the point was that rather than say how terrible that was, people failed to point out how wonderful it was that they survived it. Mm -hmm. You know that they worked their way past it, and that was a yeah. major major thing because I'm I'm sure they had a deal. Okay. 
I think yeah. the Clintons always had a deal. Hey, you can fuck who you want to fuck, and I'll fuck who I want to fuck. Just one rule: don't get caught. Yeah. And right. and he blew the rule. In public, yeah. Yeah, in public, and it embarrassed her. All right, uh, that was a very hard thing to get over, but they got over it. They got past it. They're still together. You know. Yeah, yeah. Who knows what's happening behind closed doors? But you know, they got through it publicly. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I'm I, sure they get. He probably pay for it. Every marriage has some glue, okay, yeah. that keeps it together. And their glue yep. was that they were, uh, as an alcoholic is to booze, they were to politics. Yeah. Okay. They were political junkies, and this was their life, and this was their love, their true love. And the thing that they shared together and the thing that bound them together was that love of politics. Yeah. And, and I don't think it was sex. I don't think it was mutual physical attraction. I think there was respect. Mm -hmm. And I think there was a, a very nice love there. But the love they shared was because of a commonality of, of purpose. And uh, I, th I think it was. A, I think when the book is finally written, that truly tells the whole story, it's going to be a very interesting book about mm -hmm. why these two people survived all this. And they're, you know, they're still married to this day, and he supported her in the campaign. Yep. You know, we don't hear much from him lately. He seems to be very quiet. She doesn't seem to be saying much of anything. Yeah. You know? I mean, to this day, this fucking asshole Trump... Oh, God, I'm glad I can say that with being interrupted, without being interrupted. This fucking asshole Trump... Um, just uh, every time he gets a chance, goes after Hillary. He's still going out to these rallies going, lock her up. Right. I mean, come on. This is what may kill it for Trump, is he's playing the same playbook this time. Same exact playbook, although it is now anachronistic. I mean, to go after Hillary Clinton at this point, to go after Obama at this point, yeah, you know. Let him keep playing it then. Let him keep playing it. If he's going to play the same song he played last time, people, I don't think are going to buy it for a second time running. I think they might go for a different uh, set of things. I, I, I really like to read the faces behind him when they when he goes to those rallies now I, I like to read the faces behind him and see what people are you know what their what their faces are saying when he starts mouthing off like that there's a few people back there that are kind of rolling their eyes and going okay what's he gonna say is there anything different yeah and it's interesting american patriot is writing here uh, uh... Let's see here. Uh, why hasn't Obama endorsed Biden, his VP? Because I, I don't think he wants to get involved in, in, yeah. in no. a choice. I mean, once there's a Democratic nominee, he'll probably go out and give some he'll speeches. He'll prefer then, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a conscious decision. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it, he's not going to yet anyway. And I think it's an important one because it's one that, uh, oh, here, here comes Ray Renati. What do you know? Uh Good. We'll add Ray to the uh, to the thing, and now I can. It's Ray Ray. It's, hey, it's Ray Ray, who we haven't seen in a while because. How's it uh, going? Hold on a second. Let me get your uh, your. Uh, let's see. It's Tom Amaguchi. There we go. Goomba. There we go. Is it showing Goomba the again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still that's the name. Uh, there's uh, there's Ray Ray. Where have you been? Name. Where have you been, Ray? You've been out uh, vacationing or something? Yeah, we went. We went down to L.A. and uh, for a week, and then my wife and I went to Yosemite for a few days, and then I, I fell down and hurt my knee, re-injured my injured knee six miles away from anything. Oh, really? really? Yeah, and I had to walk. Fortunately, I had those like those trekking poles, and I used them as crutches to get back. Oh my God! And then I couldn't walk for a few days, and um, yeah, it was kind of a I'm lucky. I, I mean, I'm I'm okay now, but yeah. 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 Well, good. I mean, if I hadn't had those, I don't know. I guess I would have found a tree branch or something. You're, you're looking nice and healthy. You know. Oh, thanks. Yeah. 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 So, is the knee okay now? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, we were. Just, yeah, we just been talking about old presidents. This is what we've been talking about. Old yeah. presidents. Well, you know, yeah. Clinton yeah. and the Obamas. 
Oh God, I long for those days. I even long for George W. Bush. Well, no, that, what, I, what, I, what I've often said is, you know, Trump makes me to say, uh, turn around and say, well, you know, of course Obama wasn't that bad. And then I look back and go, well, you know, Bush wasn't that bad. Yeah. And then I go, well, Reagan. You know, I wish we had Reagan back. He, you know. <laughs> oh God! And then Reagan's I, the one who started. Then this I problem, go, I, 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 I actually, I wish we had Nixon. You know, yes, yes. no kidding. Uh, and and and, and, then, and, and then when I think about it, I say, actually, we'd like Hitler back. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have the concentration camps now, so we're getting there. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're not supposed to call here. This very interesting discussion here. Uh, I saw an interview with. Uh, uh, I was, where was it? It was on TMZ, believe it or not, with Harvey Levin. And who was he talking to who was black? Uh, oh, yeah, no, George Takai, who was talking about his time in the Japanese concentration camps here in America. And uh, uh, Harvey Levin was going, well, you can't call them concentration camps. That, 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 that rings too wrong because that's what, you know, that's what the Nazi camps were called. And George Takai George said, was there. No, he said, no, they weren't. He said, what the Germans had were extermination camps. They called them concentration camps to sanitize them. Yeah. He said, right. but a, a concentration camp, by definition, is any place where you put a bunch of people of a singular nationality or race. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and put them in there and keep them there without benefit of trial. Thus or concentration. Due, or, or due process. Word. Yeah. yeah. He said very You're much so. You're concentrating a group. Yeah, very much so these things are concentration camps. What Germany had were extermination camps. Oh and my. I said to myself, gee, George oh Takai, is that observant about things? <laughs> you know? Oh, my. Oh, my. Takai. Takai. Oh, my. Takai. <laughs> There's a, uh, there's, a, I don't know if you ever saw his uh, documentary to B2K. It's really, it's really good. Yeah. But there's a, they were doing a roast and, um, and William Shatner was doing the roast and, uh, and uh, George K says, uh, by the way, uh, Bill, it's, it's pronounced to K as in to pay. <laughs> <laughs> I love that scene of the movie. But it, it, it uh, um, uh, I thought it was a very observant thing to say, and I thought that uh, Harvey Levin was full of shit, you know, that, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, these are concentration camps, uh, plain and simple. We don't call them that because it brings back that memory of what we called those things in Germany, but they were extermination camps. We haven't gotten to that point yet with these, you know. We're not going for mass extermination. Uh, I... I actually saw some uh, actual fake news on the Fox website mm -hmm. where they published an article by some guy yeah. uh, who said that there was nothing happening in those in those camps, that everyone has showers and nice beds and it's clean. And I mean, it was on the Fox News uh, channel on their website. Yeah. And, and they published it as oh, truth. Oh, no. But you know what happened? Uh, you had Trump say today. That they're, they, they pl the places they're at now are nicer than the places they came from. Oh, I know. What, a, what an ass. Oh, well, good. I'm glad that they decided to come up to Club Med. You know, I mean. The nerve. Yeah. Uh. yeah. I mean. The noise. You know, I, I saw that, that interview with the HHS the first week that they brought that stuff out. And it was disgusting. It was absolutely disgusting. That, that lady that was there the first week. And she was sitting there d describing all that stuff that was happening. Um, and the way she was talking about it, I, I couldn't believe it. I mean, th she was talking about how she was interviewing a kid, and the kid was peeing his pants right there while she was interviewing him. And, and talking about how the kid had no toothpaste and no soap, and the kids were watching kids and the whole bit. And she was trying to, you know, keep us, you know, a stern face because she was a mother, you know, and the whole bit. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was disgusting. I can't believe that the United States of America in this time, at this time, in this day and age, is doing this. I mean, I never thought I'd see that. 
Well, I mean, right. what, I, what I said earlier was, where's the United Nations? Where are all these yes, organizations? I heard you say where are these humanitarian organizations jumping in to say, hey, what's going on here is a humanitarian crisis? You know, it may not be on the same level as what went on in Syria because there was carnage and death involved there uh, and, and bombings and so on. But nevertheless, I mean, if we if, if these organizations came to the fore in that situation, where are they now? I don't know. Yeah. So it, it's and, and, and we we could do something about Trump if these Republicans who uh, if if there were enough Republicans who. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, you're you're muted. I'm muted. No, Ray is. He's, he's Ray. You're muted. Oh, yeah. are you muted? Unmute yourself. His microphone probably came undone. It could be. It oh. could be. Huh? <laughs> well, yeah, he lost his microphone. He lost his microphone. Oh well. Um, yeah. That's what you get for having all that fancy equipment. Well, let me. Can I bring up something that's tr trite and uh, uh, ridiculously? Well, let me see here. I, you got your microphone working? Guess not. <laughs> if you have a camera there, probably by unplugging, well, huh? What happened to your microphone? Oh well, uh, we, you can. You're an actor. You can do this in mime. Yes. Yeah. I don't think he can even hear us. Maybe not. What's he using for a microphone? Can you hear us today? Know. Can you hear us? Hey, raise your hand if you can hear us. He can't hear us. No. Oh, wow. Well, no. anyway, um, let me bring up something that is not as serious, uh, but it, it's something that came across today, uh, and I uh, thought that uh, uh, this was worthy of note. Uh, two of the industries, uh, the Stephen Galloway, who is an executive editor of Hollywood Reporter, published a column today saying that, oh, and damn it, Ray would enjoy this discussion, oh. <laughs> that the Television Academy and the Motion Picture Academy merge into one, uh, oh, well, we just lost uh, him. He's probably doing a reboot. He's probably yeah. doing a reboot. Uh, that, uh, let me get rid of his picture for the time being here. There we go. Um, let me do this. There we go. Um, okay. That the Motion Picture Academy and the Television Academy uh, merge. That it's gotten to the point where what's being done on television is the same as what's being done with movies. Mm -hmm. That they, all we're talking about is the venue in which they are presented. Right. And uh, I, I think that's kind of an interesting um, uh, take on it. Did you, did you hear what I was... Are you there, Ray? No, what? sorry about that. I, for some reason, this Rode microphone does not work well with this computer. It cuts out after like 10 minutes. Yeah, and my me, other mics don't. I don't know why. Let me uh, put you back in the picture. What okay. I was saying is there is this proposal by the uh, executive editor of The Hollywood Reporter that the Television Academy and the Motion Picture Arts... Uh, Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences merge that they no longer have relevancy separately because television has become movies, movies have become television, you know, what with the existence of the Netflixes and the HBOs, where do you cut off, where do you say this isn't a movie and that is? You know, hmm. where, mm -hmm. where do you cut off this is a television show and that isn't? Yeah. Which which two organizations do they want to merge? The uh, Television Academy and the Motion Picture uh, Academy of yes. Arts and Sciences. Oh, uh, okay. And that they should just merge into one. Yeah, kind of like SAG AFTRA did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which yeah. is really it's kind of like SAG AFTRA because one is a motion picture uh, organization uh, that uh, that handles Screen Actors Screen Actors Guild, and uh, then uh, uh, you know. Uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, and then uh, um, uh, after after which was television. So, yeah. So television and radio. I, it, and, it makes yeah. a, it makes sense to me. I mean, yeah. 
there was a time where, hey, movies were movies and television was television and you went to the movies and you watched uh, TV shows. But that's not the case anymore. Yeah. Right. I mean, and, what, what won yeah. for best foreign film last year? A Netflix film, a film that was made specifically for distribution via video. And what are you seeing when you go to the movies? Do you think that's a film you're watching any longer? No. That's a video projection. Yes, Tom. I just remember, uh, well, what was the, there was a criterion, I don't know if it's changed, there, a criterion for motion pictures to qualify for the Academy Awards. There was something like they had to play in a motion, in, in the theater in Los Angeles for a week uh, within, no. you know, definitely within that year, definitely a lot in by December. They by had, they had to December. open up. They had to open up with uh, before the last week in uh, December in either New York or, or Los Angeles. Oh, okay, New York and, or Los Angeles. And that's why a lot of people go, gee, this picture got nominated for an Academy Award, but it hasn't even started playing in my town. And the reason it didn't is it got nominated because it, it came up for consideration because of those parameters. So, yeah. Yeah. So. It's kind of like the Tony Awards. Uh, you have to be part of the American Theater Wing, which means you're either a Broadway theater company or one of their regional companies that they've given access to. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> My voice is starting to get a little hoarse tonight because I've been doing more talking than I normally do. <laughs> I haven't had to do this in years, folks. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I just think it's not a bad idea. It, it, what the person was saying was, you know, times have changed. This isn't, we're not watching black and white TV sets anymore, you know. And, and what is this? And there is becoming this argument about, well, should we let these next Netflix movies be nominated for Academy Awards? Of course you should. Sure. You know, Roma was as much a theater film as, you know, it, it, it doesn't matter where it's shown. It matters what the form is, you know. And mm -hmm. yes, you could, you could do what they do in England. You know, they've got one thing called the BAFTAs. And they've got the BAFTA, the film BAFTAs, and they've got the television BAFTAs. And the television BAFTAs don't deal with made for, you know, Netflix movies. They deal with TV shows, you know, sitcoms and reality shows. And, or they, they don't like to call them reality shows. What do they call them? Formatted reality, they call them. <laughs> Uh, well, that's, I like or that. Or scripted reality. Scripted reality is. Well, they're more honest. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, and and a foreign TV show isn't uh, or foreign movies uh, under their auspices isn't called a foreign movie. It's films not in the English language. Uh. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> I just I just think that uh, you know. Uh, the time has come that we start changing the definition of of what film is, what television is, and whatever. Just because you're watching it on that screen at home doesn't make it television. That's just yeah. simply the way you're watching it. Yeah. You know? right. Yeah. Think of all the theaters that are at home now. Oh, right. I theater. I, you yeah, know, I, I, I can't believe how many things I watch on my phone. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's just like oh, I need. I want to finish watching this show. I will just watch it on the phone. It's well, a lot easier. Yeah, that yeah, my and, daughter orders movies all the time. She said, "Can we approve a movie?" Yeah. yeah. I mean, I find that uh, I uh, yeah, um, I you know I have a big sixty-five inch screen. We've talked about getting a seventy-five inch screen, but the other the one I have in the bedroom, which is sixty-five, is three D, and I ain't giving that up. Okay, because I love my 3D movies. Anyway, <laughs> uh, but the fact is that I sit there, it's in 3D, it's surround sound. What do I need to be in a theater for? Yeah. Well, yeah. So if somebody can kick the back of my seat so I can <laughs> see dim. Charge you $40 for popcorn. So I can see dim <laughs> projection, you know, yeah. or bad. Or I've, I've had such lousy experiences in theaters lately where... You know, the film was supposed to be in 3D, and it wasn't. Yeah. And uh, the film was so dim, you couldn't see it. Like, I went to see Black Panther 
and he was really black, so black I couldn't see him. I saw these two eyeballs walking around. Oh, on the I screen. had the same problem. I, I told you. I mean, they had the wrong lens on the camera. It was I was watching a super dark movie, yeah. and the theater was full, and I was the only one complaining. And, and I had to go down and complain to the manager of the theater, and he said, "Well, let me see." And he looks at the picture, and he goes, "You know, because it was in 3D." And he did. He didn't have his glasses. It looks fine to me. I said, same "That's what mine said." Too. I said, "Same the picture is showing in the next theater. Come on, let's take a look and see." Uh, and we walked over, and it was twice as bright as the screen in the theater I took him into. You know, and another guy wouldn't believe that it wasn't in 3D. He says it's it says it's in 3D. I said, "But it's not <laughs> playing in 3D. I know the difference, right?" So I took him up. He said, "No, it's not in 3D." Well, there's nothing we can do about it. The film started already. Of course, there's nothing they could do. Uh, and so, you know, they gave me my money back. But they, nobody in the theater complained. They all had their same, fucking glasses on thinking they were watching a 3D film. Same exactly with me. I had the and same the exact that, experience. Yeah. They're uh, the ones that will walk out and say, oh, that was a crappy movie. Y yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I found it unwatchable. I don't even know what happened. I, was, I, I just was so pissed off that I was watching this dark thing, and all I could see was... Uh, you know, African American people's eyeballs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was yeah. Like, I was like, I was watching a minstrel show or you didn't, something. You didn't want to feel like you were a racist or anything like that. Yeah, exactly. I'm sorry, I don't, <laughs> I, I don't get it. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, let me see here. We got about a minute left. You know, I this been really nice tonight. It really has been. Um, although my voice is getting hoarse. Uh, Are you on tomorrow? No way. Okay. Yeah. yeah not, I, I'm not on anymore. Uh, My I'm, wife's birthday is the 4th of July. I'm, oh, good. Good. Need some fireworks in that family. Yeah, uh, she's got fireworks. But no, but the thing is <laughs> that, that uh, we're off on Friday, too. So, you know. We'll be, oh, okay. We'll be back Tuesday after I get my blood test for my PSA. And then next Wednesday, I go to my doctor, and he'll probably tell me I have uh, prostate cancer for sure. All right. Two days of Alex's <laughs> waiting room. Yeah, well, uh, you know. I don't, I don't mind, uh, you know, at this age, if I get prostate cancer, it's nothing, you know, so whatever. It's not like Phil getting it. <laughs> well, no. Where is Phil? Phil is. Phil at his photography he, class? He's, Phil is beating up on other photo old photographers. Oh, you know? uh, yeah. Yeah. Winning yeah. awards. Yeah. <laughs> For, you know. Anyway, hey, listen, there, there's the theme. We made it through the whole show. Thank you, Tom. Boy, Tom was there for me in the beginning, and then Kevin comes along and pulls up second place, and finally we get Ray in here. And you know something? It's been one of the better shows we've done in a long time. I really, I thank you guys for it. Uh, I also want you to give a, a big wave goodbye to everybody out there, and I'll wave back at you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Okay? That's our, uh, that's our citizen panel for tonight. And uh, for all of you who couldn't call tonight, well, uh, too bad. You missed out on a good show. It was a good show. Anyway, up next, uh, you have uh, Jack Bishop. He'll be doing a little program called The Intersection. And then we're off tomorrow night. We're off. Uh, the whole Gabnet is off of uh, 4th of July and also the day afterwards. I figured we'd just take the whole time off. And then we'll be back again on Tuesday as I wait for my blood test. Uh, but we'll be back next Tuesday uh, right here, uh, right after uh, Damian Chaplin does the exchange. Uh, I want you all to have a happy uh, 4th of July. Uh, I'm going to be living in a neighborhood where these kids love to blow off the firecrackers like crazy. So I won't get any sleep. But I certainly hope you do, and I hope you have yourself a really good 4th of July weekend. Eat lots of hot dogs, and don't put on too much weight. Okay, I'm going to try not to, although I put on a few pounds. <laughs> anyway, that's it. I'm Alex Bennett. We'll be back again next, uh, next Tuesday, 10 o'clock, Eastern Daylight Time. Same time, same station, and live. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye. <laughs>